See, to get seat into MBBS, we studied a lot of useless things. What is Solon SE, what is Lily SE, what is uh, Brassic SE, what is uh, botanical names, uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh my God. And we have done simple harmonic motion, so much of physics. Is it of any use for us after joining medical college? Not at all. So unfortunately, in our education system, filtering is done on certain useless criteria, unfortunately. You go and ask a gastroenterologist what is novobiasin sensitivity. He will remember Novartis. He won't remember novobiasin. So, doctor, for the next 90 days, there is some useless stuff. Big, useless piece of shit. We need to remember. Develop methods of remembering it and reproduce an exam. All the toppers pass through the same phase, no regrets about it, start enjoying how to, how to get into this game of consolidation of preparation in the last 90 days. Now, gram positive cocci, let us talk enterococcus. Enterococcus is nitrite negative, that is the first word you need to remember. Enter O, that is nothing can enter. So, that means nitrate is negative. N for nitrate is negative. So, enterococcus has got fecalis, fecium. Where is it important? Enterococcus lead to infective endocarditis. Especially if you are having any genitourinary intervention or a... What is a genitourinary intervention? Suppose you happen to have anything, a surgical procedure entering into your genital tract or a GI problem, then it typically lead to development of infective endocarditis by entering into the bloodstream. It is also responsible for the urinary tract infections also, but enterococcus, what is the important drug of choice you will remember, vancomycin, you should not forget. So this is how the enterococci typically looks like and uh, they are also earlier called group D streptococci, but there are some special features for this group D streptococci, which are enterococci. They have an ability to grow in 6.5% NaCl. Now tell me, 6.5% NaCl, where did we just before studied gamma hemolytic streptococci to differentiate between Within the gamma hemolytic streptococci, we used 6.5% NaCl. The ones which grow in that 6.5% NaCl and which are gamma hemolytic are classically the enterococci. They can hydrolyze the esculin in 40% bile and they can be able to grow at 10 degrees Celsius and 45 degrees Celsius. But they are all not important. Only you need to remember... 6.5% NaCl growth means what will you remember? You will remember enterococci is what I want to underscore to all of you. Very good. This is called nitrate reduction. What did I tell you about enterococci? Immediately what you should remember? Enter O. Nothing can enter. Nitrate is negative. So we use a nitrate reduction test. What is the importance of nitrate reduction? This is called peptone nitrate broth. Suppose if the nitrate reduction is, if the organism is capable, then you get a color like this change. E. coli, they also stay in the gut. E. coli are the classical example of the organisms that are the ones which show nitrate reduction positivity. Whereas enterococci, though they are also there in the gut, they are not nitrate reducing is what you have to basically remember. Now a few bullets about Staphylococcus. I am very happy to see 131 students being online. Please tell your classmates, it is an absolutely free session for the next 90 days. And... Uh, a couple of hours, it's called uh, Chai Pe Charcha. 
is what uh, especially 6 to 8 is a time where our adrenal is very low we don't feel like reading in the reading room so that is the best time that you get a classmate like dr murli bharadwaj to chat a little bit to get challenged a little bit so after we finish gram positive gram negative okay today we'll have the quiz quiz is the one which received a very good response yesterday a lot of students wrote uh, a very good feedback whatsapping that uh, so the quiz is a good feature probably more quiz and less of uh, the review is a uh, opinion of the students so staff aureus gram positive okay which are in clusters is a classical appearance it is coagulase positive and also catalase positive and what is that organism both positive that is staphylococcus aureus and now remaining things are all very easy. It leads to cellulitis, paniculitis, mastitis, belenitis, carbuncle, curuncle, anything, folliculitis, fasciitis, all soft tissue infections. Just think of staphylococcus aureus should be your answer. Similarly, paronychia, osteomyelitis. Most common cause of the osteomyelitis will be the staphylococcus except in sickle cell anemia patients where salmonella is very common. Now, what are the toxins that are produced by the staphylococcus? It produces enterotoxins. And if you look at the food poisoning caused by the staphylococcus, there is a preformed toxin which is involved. That's the reason its half life is very short. Within six hours after consuming food, people start developing vomiting and everything. There is a favorite question of the examiner. Less than 8 hours symptoms developed in food poisoning. What is the organism responsible? What comes to your mind? Staphylococcus aureus. It produces elastase, collagenase, lecithinase, lipase, penicillinase, coagulase, blah, blah, blah. But what is important bullet you need to remember? Whenever we get common cold, influenza, post-influenza, some people go into pneumonia. Most common organism, bacterial organism implicated in the post-influenza pneumonia, you should remember Staphylococcus aureus, if I want to underscore. So this is how you find a carbuncle, classically. This is how on the forehead you can see the presence of a furuncle. Once more, what is the organism that comes to your mind? Furuncle, carbuncle, Staphylococcus. The next organism is Staphylococcus epidermidis. It is also gram positive cluster under the epidermis. But what is the differentiator between the Staphylococcus aureus versus the Staphylococcus epidermidis? Both of them are coagulase positive, but this is catalase negative. And if you look at the novobiosin sensitivity, that is another important feature of the Staphylococcus epidermidis is what I want to underscore to all of you. Epidermidis can cause vegetations on the tricuspid. Those who are IV drug abusers from the epidermis, it will go and lead to right sided circulation will go towards the right atrioventricular valve which is the tricuspid. So central lines, ventriculoperitoneal shunts between the brain and the peritoneum they are all the important things implicated in breeding the Staphylococcus epidermidis. So, how do you treat? Vancomycin is the drug of choice for the Staphylococcus epidermidis. And uh, if it is vancomycin resistant, then linezolid is the one which you will be using. So, do not forget linezolid for the vancomycin resistant Staphylococcus epidermidis is the neat PG bullet that you are going to remember and fire it in tomorrow's exam and you will remember it. Now let us talk on novobiosin sensitivity. If you want to differentiate saprophyticus staphylococcus staprophyticus from that of the staphylococcus epidermidis and aureus on one hand and saprophyticus on other hand, what is the differentiator? Saprophyticus is novobiosin resistant, whereas 
Epidermidis and aureus, both of them are novobiosin sensitive. Once more, between epidermidis and aureus, how do you differentiate? Epidermidis is catalase negative, coagulase positive, and uh, based upon this, we can differentiate epidermidis from that of the, the aureus, as what we have already discussed in that master table, right? So, don't forget that. 